What are the things that you fear that's been keeping you from living your dream? That's been keeping you from doing some things that you would like to do? Just think about those things. Every time your voice speaks and thinks about having something new, fear is there to squash it. Every time you want to try something new, fear is there to squash it. Every time you want to go somewhere new, fear is there to squash it. The big problem I see in the world today is that too many people are letting fear always win these inner conflicts. What if you don't do it? What if you don't chase your dreams? What if you don't stand up for yourself? What if you do not step up to the plate and take that challenge? You have no idea of the breathtaking future that's on its way to you, that's asking you, please let me through. When you decide that you are good enough, when you decide you give yourself permission to have it all, have all the love, have all the health, when you give yourself permission, it's like the inside of you, your champion is saying, let me out. Fear forces evolution. Fear is good. Fear are instincts. Fear is the radar that tells you what you need to do, how to exist, and what's going to keep you alive. Fear can keep you in your comfort zone. It's safe there. You know what to expect, but nothing grows there. Life happens outside the comfort zone. So let's look at how we can begin to take some steps to restructure that fear, to begin to expand our visions of ourselves, to begin to increase our self-esteem. Webster said that self-esteem means confidence and satisfaction in oneself. Look at your life right now. Whatever you've done up to this point in time, your life is working. Whatever you have produced, it came out of you as a result of the kind of person that you have become. You have to be fearless. You have to be completely fearless and have utmost belief in whatever that, that feeling is inside you. It's all a mindset. It's how, it's how bad you want something and nothing tastes better than when you've earned it. it there's a no better feeling than when you've earned it. So just start. Stop talking about it. If not now, when? If not you, then who? Listen, someone else is starting right now. As long as you got air in your lungs, you have an opportunity to improve your current situation. So human up, accept the challenge, change your associations, and soon you will find yourself receiving accolations and congratulations. But first you gotta say I do to the new you and commit to a lifetime of small wins that at times will seem meaningless and pointless. Are you in a position to quit? Or are you in a position to go harder? Are you in a position to go stronger? Are you willing to dig and go as far as you can in your life? Are you willing to suffer? So instead of boxing yourself in and thinking only about all the different ways that something could be bad, could break, could fall to pieces, Think about all the things that you could do if you take the action. The most common fears that we experience, which often sabotage all hope for success, are the fears of failure, poverty, and loss of money. These fears cause people to avoid risk of any kind and to reject opportunity when it is presented to them. They are so afraid of failure that they are almost paralyzed when it comes to taking any chances at all. There are many other fears that interfere with our happiness. People fear the loss of love or the loss of their jobs and their financial security. People fear embarrassment or ridicule. People fear rejection and criticism of any kind. People fear the loss of respect or esteem of others. These and many other fears hold us back throughout life. The most common reaction in a fear situation is the attitude of, I can't. This is the fear of failure and loss that stops us from taking action. It is experienced physically, starting in the solar plexus. When people are really afraid, their mouth and throat go dry, their heart starts pounding. Sometimes they breathe shallowly and their stomach churns. Often they feel like getting up and running to the bathroom. These are all physical manifestations of the inhibitive negative habit pattern, which we all experience from time to time. Whenever a person is in the grip of fear, he feels like a deer caught in the headlights of a car. This fear paralyzes action. It often shuts down the brain and causes the individual to revert to the fight or flight reaction. Fear is a terrible emotion that undermines our happiness and can hold us back throughout our lives. Fear makes come true that which one is afraid of. 
Now, even if it only comes true in the imagination, we must experience the tortures of that which we fear. Tortures often as not worse than those if what we feared actually came to pass physically in our lives. It's why the old line, a coward dies a thousand deaths, a brave man dies but once, is really true. Fear makes come true that which one is afraid of. If fear of something is held long enough, it may well bring on that which we fear, but it really doesn't make much difference because experiencing the fear is the same thing. That is, as far as our mind and body are concerned, it's actually happening over and over again, doing its inevitable damage to our physical bodies. Ralph Waldo Emerson said that fear is ignorance. Whenever we're afraid of something, I don't mean the perfectly natural, normal fears that work to keep us alive, but the gnawing, unreasoning, illogical, and neurotic fear of something. It's only because we don't know the real truth about it. If we did, the fear would vanish. That would include a neurotic fear of death, the fear that we are not liked or loved and so forth. I think the thing to remember here is that when we fear something, it takes its toll on our mind and body just as if that which we fear had in fact come to pass. And we can bring to pass that which we fear. If you want to change attitudes, start with a change in behavior. In other words, begin to act the part as well as you can of the person you would rather be, the person you most want to become. Gradually, the old fearful person will fade away. Dr. Frankel learned that by controlling his attitude, the concentration camp fell away. His mind was free to roam where he wanted it to roam. Think about what he wanted it to think about. It was as free as the birds, freer really, for it could fly to the ends of the earth, to the ends of imagination in an instant. And so can yours. And so can mine. You need large amounts of self-discipline to deal courageously with all the fear inducing events of your life. This is probably why Churchill said, courage is rightly considered the foremost of the virtues, for upon it all others depend. The fact is that everyone is afraid, and usually of many things. This is normal and natural. Often fear is necessary to preserve life, prevent injury, and guard against financial mistakes. So if everyone is afraid, what is the difference between the brave person and the coward? The only difference is that the brave person disciplines himself to confront, deal with, and act in spite of the fear. In contrast, the coward allows himself to be dominated and controlled by the fear. Someone once said that with regard to warfare, although it applies to any situation, the difference between the hero and the coward is that the hero sticks in there five minutes longer. Fortunately, all fears are learned. No one is born with fears. Fears can therefore be unlearned by practicing self-discipline repeatedly with regard to fear until it goes away. Your ability to confront, deal with, and act in spite of your fears is the key to happiness and success. One of the best exercises you can practice is to identify a person or situation in your life of which you are afraid and resolve to deal with that fear situation immediately. Do not allow it to make you unhappy for another minute. Resolve to confront the situation or person and put the fear behind you. The only way to deal with a fear is to address it head on. Remind yourself that denial is not a river in Egypt. The natural tendency of many people is to deny that they have a problem caused by fear of some kind. They're afraid of confronting it. In turn, it becomes a major source of stress, unhappiness, and psychosomatic illness. Be willing to deal with the situation or person directly. As Shakespeare said, take arms against the sea of troubles, and in so doing, end them the, the companion of fear is worry. Like twin sisters, fear and worry go around together. Mark Twain once wrote, I have worried about a lot of things in life and most of them never happened. So if you want to do something, if you've thought about something you want to do, take it head on. Decide that you're going to start looking at it, start doing research on it, start tackling it, start becoming involved in whatever and wherever it might lead you to begin to explore the possibilities in that particular thing that you're seeking so that you can begin to learn all you can about it. Decide that you're going to face it, that whatever shortcomings you have, that you're going to strengthen yourself there. Whatever training that's required, that you're going to go get that training, that you're going to get started right now.
And George Washington Carver would say, do what you can, where you are with what you have, and never be satisfied. S.B. Fuller used to say, and you heard Joe Dudley talk about, always strive to be more than that which you are. Yeah, don't get satisfied with yourself. Always know that wherever you are, you can enjoy more, that you deserve more. But most people, you know what they do? Most people go through life quietly and safely, tiptoeing to an early grade. Find out what it is you want and go after it as if your life depends on it. Why? Because it does.